Well, this is Dr. Johnson here, and I'm uh, communicating with you on a uh, another episode or uh, video of KoiBeginner.com. And uh, using a new camera, hopefully it's better than uh, the webcam capture. Um, I came to talk to you today just about a very brief subject, and it has to do with water test kits. Some of you may have picked up from other videos that I've put together in my websites that I believe that when you are approaching a fish disease case, the first thing you do is collect a history uh, from the owner, like, have you gotten any new fish? Did you quarantine? How many fish you got? What are you feeding? How often are you feeding? Basically, just try to figure out if there's anything they're doing uh, in their care of the fish that is, uh, is not up to par. Then you would evaluate, look at the uh, pond situation, make sure that it meets the criteria that we would use for um, healthy fish. And then finally, the third thing, every time, is going to be, uh, once you know the pond, uh, the third thing, every time, is going to be water testing. So, water testing, what do you use? What does it matter? Well, if you are testing for research purposes, um, you would want to use what is known as a HAC test kit, H-A-C-H dot com. That's where you get them, HAC test kits, H-A-C-H. There's an aquaculture test kit, and it's accurate to within like a zillionth of a point or something like that. Crazy, crazy accurate. Not the kind of accuracy you and I need. Then um, there's a Lamotte test kit as well. Let's not give them the short end of the stick. It's L-A-M-O-T-T-E, Lamotte from Lamont Chemical, they have a great test kit too. If you said, Eric, I'm gonna get you one of these great test kits, which one do you want? I'd be like, I don't know, they're both super. So, but that's a high-end test kit. Then there's the middle of the road, and that is the drop type test kits. And those drop type test kits are pretty accurate. Um, you can buy them at the um, pet store or um, various uh, garden and nursery centers, especially those with specialties in koi and pond fish. Um, you can get those test kits there. Now the drop type test kits are pretty accurate if you run them exactly the way they say on the bottle. But the thing is, knowing to the tenth of a point how much your ammonia is, is probably not that important. So there's a third kind of test kit that I really like a lot, and I'll tell you what the controversy is. I like the dip test kits. It's basically, you buy these vials, and inside the vial there's, say, 50 little strips that have pads on them. Currently, you have to get um, nitrite, nitrate, and pH or something, on, and carbonate alkalinity on one strip, and then the ammonia strip is on a completely another strip, and it has to do with chemistry. But these strip-type test kits are nice because they're easy to run. It take, you, know, you just dip it in there, and then you compare the color to the chart after about 60 seconds. You don't have to mix any chemicals. You don't get anything on you. Um, they're easy to store. The thing is, is that they're not terribly accurate, but here's the thing. People criticize them and they go, oh my god, they can be off by as much as a point and a half. Well, the thing about that is, if you're talking about pH, and it's going to be, and it's like 7.4, and it says the dip test says it's 7.8, it doesn't matter. Or if the ammonia level is actually 3, and it reads 3.8, it doesn't matter. Here's the thing, and I always, say, I always say this in my seminars, I say, if you woke up in the middle of the night and your smoke detector was going off, that's saying you got a problem, okay? So just the presence of smoke tells you, and the smoke detector going off says, you got a problem, you better get out of the house. And I don't think anyone had said, hey, honey, don't be in such a hurry to leave. Why don't we see and measure how much smoke there is? What I'm saying is, is that the dip strip test kits are accurate enough to let you know if there's a problem, that your pH is in, appears to be in a safe range, um, not wildly out of control. pH crafts would show up plain old yellow and uh, high pH would show up as uh, blue. And it's the same as the pH test kits, only it might be off by, you know, a half a point or 0.5. Um, the ammonia test kits, same kind of thing, half a point, no big deal. It might be 3.5 and it reads 4. It doesn't matter. If you have any ammonia at all, you got a problem. Nitrites, same thing. If you got measurable nitrites that show up on the test kit, you got a problem. It doesn't matter how high or low, you're still going to put low-level salt in the pond and, and do water changes and address the issues of high nitrite. And the same thing with nitrates. It'll tell you whether it's crazy high or normal uh, or low. Okay, so I like the dip type, uh, dip strip test kits. I think they're perfectly adequate for your purposes. Uh, if you're measuring things and you like to be real exact and everything, the, di the drop type test kits are great. And if you're doing research where you expect another researcher to replicate what you're doing, then you would want to use a Hawk and Lamont test kit. 
Um, that's pretty much all for now, and I appreciate your time on that. The uh, Koi Vet Forum is up and running. It seems to be working very, very well. I hope you'll go over and see KoiVetForum.com. You can also access that through KoiVet.com. I uh, want to put in a good word for a fellow uh, I've known for a long time. His name is Ted McConnell, and he owns PondRx.com. If you need medicines, foods, or medicated foods this year, um, throw some business his way, and I'd appreciate it. Uh, I guess that's all for today, and I'll see you tomorrow on Koi Beginner. Thanks.